Hey everyone, how's it going? We're gonna get started. Uh, sorry to interrupt the very cool conversations that I am sure you are having. Uh, so we've come to the saddest session in the entire uh, week, and that is the closing. Uh, but uh, never fear, uh, there will be more things in the future. And what the purpose of this session is, is to gather a lot of feedback for ourselves for the future to make the next ones even better. So we'll go through a few things. Uh, I'll do like a, we'll do a super fast uh, recap of the week. Um, then we'll do a retro. Then we'll have a, an amazing uh, reprise of the fantastic talk that Danny gave yesterday that all of you uh, must uh, see. We'll have a few announcements and we'll have some thanks. So uh, we have this slide at the very beginning. Uh, we've seen a huge uh, growth from last year. Uh, how many sessions did we end up with in the end? Uh, probably there were a lot more on conf um, sessions, right? So let's go 23, 23 IPFS thing. There were a lot of, a lot of these here and then uh, on conference sessions, if we go to the spreadsheet, Gotta get some linking in there. And yeah, there were a ton more sessions here. So probably something like 20 additional sessions-ish, maybe 30 more. So we ended up with something like 130-ish sessions. Um, and more, pe and plus all of the impromptu conversations that happened across uh, the halls. Um, I think one really cool thing that we see in the, wait, hold on, getting ahead of myself, um, of the, um, uh, schedule, the, one, one a fantastic thing about uh, the way that this format works is that all of these tracks uh, were driven by track leads and people that were super interested in those conversations. And since the last year, we've dropped some things that maybe weren't um, as desired by the, by the folks uh, who uh, ran the tracks this year. And I'm sure that we'll see very different things uh, in the next thing. So um, I think this is working uh, uh, well, uh, but you know, we'll hear more from the retro. Uh, I think I, I want to just thank, uh, even though we'll have a thanks section, just as, in terms of just recapping this week, uh, thank every one of you for uh, bringing your all to all of the discussions and helping advance the entire ecosystem by either organizing tracks, leading talks, leading discussions, um, committing to solving problems. Uh, the energy of the entire week has been uh, super positive and phenomenal to, to see in the community. So um, one uh, uh, benchmark for me is just kind of uh, just seeing how many really important problems are getting discussed and um, not just discussed in terms of like, oh yeah, this is a huge problem, oh well, uh, but rather this is a huge problem and here are like five or six different solutions, let's argue about them and see which one we're gonna commit to, commit to doing. Um, and like, that's, a, that's a really great great um, uh, sense of progress. When we started uh, EpiFest thing last year, the goal was to kind of uh, create a venue for the community to come together and solve problems and we, we're doing it. Uh, it's, it's really great to see um, see that happening. Uh, cool, so uh, let's dive into, now that I've primed you with like um, starting to think about the uh, the sessions and so on and kind of what worked, worked and what didn't work, uh, we're gonna do a retro. And uh, in, in advance of the dog fooding section, uh, I just wanted to reflect on the fact that uh, we could be doing this retro in PeerPad, the um, the tool that we built uh, that is supposed to work over IPFS to be able to uh, do the whole HackMD style collaborative editing thing. Unfortunately, if you try doing that, uh, it doesn't actually work anymore. So something broke. Um, and if we look in the uh, network tab, there seems to be a lot of connections to uh, lippy 2 p nodes that are required infrastructure that may be changed. Um, if you go back to the repo here of this thing, it hasn't been updated in four years or so. So yeah, uh, let's, we, we'll hear more about this in a moment, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately we'll have to fall back to HackMD uh, again this year. And uh, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna uh, do four liked, uh, sorry, four else, which is liked, learned, lacked, and longed for. Uh, so I'm going to show you a QR code in a moment, but the way we're going to uh, divide this up is that we'll have about 15 minutes for writing, so that's not a long time, but uh, it is to kind of get the most salient observations from everybody. Um, then we'll have about seven minutes to read and rate. Uh, we'll 
uh, read and, and group and kind of emoji rate. I'll show you the emojis in a moment. And then we'll have 20 minutes for discussion. So uh, some quick reminders uh, for retros. Remember that retros are blameless. They're about sourcing feedback and opinion for ourselves. And we want to source lots of different opinions. Feedback is a gift, both positive and negative feedback. So it is good and appreciated to um, say what you didn't like. That's kind of why the uh, retro format will, will prompt you for that. And remember that opinions vary. People really disagree about some of these things. Sometimes you'll see the exact same thing being, you know, uh, people say, I want more of this, I hate this, and that's good, that's okay. It's better to voice your opinion, even if others disagree. We will take all feedback with an appropriate, and by that I mean very heavy amounts of salt. Um, we, and one more ask, if you can, try to make the feedback concrete and actionable. That's not always possible. Sometimes you just kind of want to express a feeling, and that's okay too, because then that gives us something to uh, work with for the next time. But if you can, uh, try to make it actionable for us uh, uh, in the future. When you're writing, think, um, let, I wanted to kind of have these potential section of things to consider. Um, the venue, event format, the tracks, the on-conf, the, the discussions, the thing itself, and potentially things for IPFS camp. Uh, just quick question around here. Is there any other kind of large grouping like this that you think is not properly represented? Uh, just kind of like category, like large, broad categories of, of things to retro on. Sure. Next steps. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to copy and paste this section in each one of these. Um, and that we'll, we'll, it'll be fine. We'll group these in a moment. It's okay if uh, they're a little bit messy. And when you add your comments, I'll just request that you kind of indent and you know add your comment and so on, kind of like that. Does that make sense? So that we can kind of like have automatic grouping ahead. There'll be more grouping as we as we read. Cool. So the QR code. Uh, I believe this is the QR code. Uh, hopefully this does not uh, cause a remote exploit in your device. Uh, <laughs> let me actually verify. I trust the Brave QR codes way too much. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. I hear it's also on Slack. I'll give like 10 more seconds to open this. Great. So if you need the link, find it in Slack. And uh, I'll start the timers. Um, and I think something that might be useful is uh, just kind of create a, a lot of um, points. The three minutes for the liked section start now. I will warn you when you should move to the next one.
yeah, this grouping was maybe not the best idea. <laughs> One minute left for what you liked. The tracks and on-conf and discussion sections looks rather empty. Yeah, like just some note that you would like to highlight. It might not apply to the section, right? Oh man, that is very loud. Uh, so that means maybe start moving on to the learn section. And yeah, if, if, if thing is not applicable, don't worry about it. We, we always stress test. <laughs>
that's the signal that we should be moving on to lact. And the three minutes start now. That is the signal to move for long for or stop.
So we're going to we're going to be switching to reading in a moment, but I'm going to give everybody a couple more minutes to go back to anything that you felt you didn't comment on and just sprinkle more comments in. So two minutes for you to go back and add anything that you're missing. Whoa, what happened? Whoa. Somebody undo. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> did we just like, did HackMD just eat all of the comments? Oh no. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> no, I think a lot of comments are gone. Oh man. Try it. <laughs> so annoying. The donut, the donut. Okay, I got it. I I just quickly jumped to completing things. But the comments are gone. <laughs> oh, man. That, that is really painful. Yeah, can people try undoing a few times? So this one? Uh, I can't. Which one is the most um, the most lines? I can't click the 430 one. Well, we're dog fooding, but not our product. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this seems to have less comments than the current one. Well, this is annoying. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this one does seem more completed. I'll just grab the learned section. So I think people are commenting on other things. Um, you have the video? Yeah, great. OK, this is like very messy. Okay, I pasted the. Wow, I think this is like just totally broken. All kinds of things are happening.
and the versions are gone. Oh, the cone, the cone. Oh, man. I can't read. I just see diagrams. Well, so we captured a bunch of it in the video, which is the good news. Um, the bad news is we're not going to get to discuss as much. Um, given the, how long this is taking, uh, let, let's just move through grouping and rating. And, and we know that there's like a bunch of comments that all of you had, and we will extract them from the video later. Uh, and then we'll send them out to everybody so you can read through them. So we'll leave that as, a, as an action to do. Uh, Look through the emoji ratings. Agree, loved, favorite, discuss. Um, we'll go through and read through what's there and just add those emojis to the sections that you think um, are worth uh, agreeing with, um, highlighting, or discussion, discussing. Important thing on the discuss, just max two votes per section because we, we won't have very much time to discuss things. So just the major things that you want to make sure that we, that we talk through. So I'll give like... Um, five minutes for going through this. Someone is selecting everything and is making us all very nervous. <laughs> Thank you. We have the video too. <laughs>
All right, that was the end of the time. So let's now um, go through, and I'll scan briefly through the sections. I think uh, usually in a lot of retros, just by r writing and reading what other people are writing, you kind of get a lot of the, the comments. So not all is lost. Um, and we don't need to go and through and read all this together, but uh, it sounds like there's a ton of love for the venue and the, spa the, the location and um, the outings and so on. So a ton of um, props on the location and huge amounts of love for Uni and Nicole, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some love for the track format. Um, content being highly relevant. Um, lots of love for UCANs. Uh, on learning, I still haven't seen any discussion ones. Flag them if, uh, if I'm missing them, but tons of learnings. Um, learnings about networking, so web transport and HTTP being really important. Great, the first discuss item, HTTP is really important, okay. Um, IPFS is content addressing now, discuss, always has been. Good point. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back to those two. Uh, I'm glad that everyone learned it's happening in India. That was a very important part of the message. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, um, things that people lacked. Um, yeah, just some concerns about the timing. So Saturday, um, and also some concerns about being in the same place, being isolated from the outdoors. So in Iceland, we had a lot of outdoor views, and we went outdoors the weekend before and the weekend after, and so there was a lot of outdoors time. Um, so that's something, maybe we should discuss that and discuss like the, the scheduling and the timing um, of how this ended up working out and whether we want to move to like aligning with the week next time. Uh, and then long for, uh, a, yeah, more outdoor time. Lots of comments on things. Um, and peer pad. Uh, so, so far I've seen three discusses, IPFS, content address, sorry, HTTP, content addressing, and um, whether, how to align the timing. Anything else that seems like really critical to make sure that we spend a few minutes touching on now? Forming commitments. Yes, that's a good one. Forming commitments, there were a number of comments about that too. Um, anything else? Yeah, yeah. That that like and by the way that as we get more people, that'll just get worse. But better can, in some ways. If we can publish the videos so we can watch them, like if if people want, publish the videos earlier. I know that's asking a lot of our already, you know, worked A V team, but just to be Yeah, so you're saying as the if we can get things published quickly so that people in the conference can go and watch those things. Before yeah. the entire conference is over, yeah. I yeah. think that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, A whole other model is, especially if what we're doing is a condensed update of a bunch of things, is to get some people to prep and take videos ahead of time and actually turn some of those sessions into Q&A that people have done ahead of time, right? Yep. So that's, that's another model that can get us straight more into the discussion that can only be really effective uh, in, person. Uh, in person. Yeah, that's a, a great idea. Uh, another comment in there also suggested recaps every day. So actually having a moment every day where we come back together and we just go through some of the recaps like we did for the road mapping, but just kind of 
um, highlights. Um, so all, all really good, good suggestions. I, th I think we, I guess, discussed that one uh, on, on the way. Uh, so let's maybe talk about scheduling briefly. Um, how many people here uh, would prefer to go back to the old schedule structure where uh, you can come in for the weekend ahead, you start Monday and you go through Friday, and then you maybe have the weekend ahead as well? Like, raise your hand if you strongly prefer that to the current model. Don't raise your hand if you don't care either way. It's about like half or a little bit less than half. Uh, raise your hand if you preferred this model where it didn't impact your, like you didn't have to invest an entire week and a half in incoming, you, it was less days overall. <laughs> Some. And raise your hand if you don't care that much. Okay, awesome. I think the switch back to the week uh, thing, uh, group has it uh, in that we probably should do that next time. Uh, scheduling, all other constraints in the world allowing. Um, so that's good feedback. Um, the other two things, HTTP and IFS content addressing. Uh, HTTP is important. Uh, whoever wrote that or people have opinions, do you want to maybe take that? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller. Here, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be spicy. Uh, uh, how about uh, we, uh, you, you could like reshift IPFS and say IPFS is on top of HTTP a lot of the time or most of the time or it's fine if it's like all of the time um, and you can write IPFS implementations on a vanilla HTTP client and server system. That's spicy. Okay. okay. So some folks are like yes, some folks no. Okay. Um, for, there's a really important shift that, that is happening I see around that, which is in the, the, the beginning, so to speak, a lot of the messaging was around we will build something that replaces HTTP to a certain extent. And, and now we're discovering HTTP is kind of like well, it's going to be hard to replace and actually maybe actually doesn't make sense. Um, we can ship a lot of the features that we have into the world of HTTP without having everybody to redo their whole networking stack, which is kind of painful. And so I, I think that for me is like the most critical shift is that, hey, IPFS is bigger than its network transport. It is important that we use these principles and ship them to pe where people are rather than requiring them to have to change their whole world first. Yeah, that's really well put. And I think sort of like looking back, um, yeah, do you want to applause that? Yeah. Uh, in the intervening time since we started, um, the, IPF, the HTTP stack just got dramatically larger and much more baked into the world. And so it's much more difficult. It's kind of like those attempts to do away with IPv4. It's like, mm, probably singularity might happen first. Uh, like, uh, so. Sorry, not to uh, bring in a, th those like nervous laughter. What would have been, what would have been a like, oh, that's funny, now has turned into nervous laughter and that's the effect of GPT-4. Uh, so, um, it's a really good point. Um, also point for the Lipid-OP team of saying, hey, how could we use the lipid -OP stack to do that without kind of abandoning uh, without having to kind of not use HTTP. I think there were a number of discussions about that. Um, any, any other comments here around HTTP is really important? Maybe about clients and just recognizing that a va the vast majority of uh, content being used, uh, IPFS content is likely shown in browsers, in vanilla browsers that do not have extensions or do not have, um, are not brave. Any other thoughts, comments on this? What would you like to see? For the people that wrote that or plus one it or whatever, what outcome would you like to see by next year? Oh, just, just to add real quick to the previous point. Um, I, I think I, definitely this was a shift for me, but uh, with HTTP, I always thought like, oh, we have client and server, and there's always a client and always a server. But this can actually just go both ways, right? Like I can be both a client and a server. And so, and so the P actually stands for peer. It, it does, it does, it does. <laughs> um, yeah, one other thing is like, 
I think HTTP is actually, if you just look at the semantics, a really elegant protocol. Um, and lots of people are putting lots of thought into it in like working on it. So I think we should just try and embrace it instead of like working against it because there's many ways now you can utilize it. It's actually self-descriptive. Um, and so just trying to reinvent something that replaces it, I think it's, it's, might be a fight we're not gonna win. Talking about the semantics, not the actual underlying transport. I would go as far as saying that servers are not bad. They're like buffer in the cloud. If you treat it that way, they're very convenient. And HTTP is a way to write into that buffer. I also think I'll just reiterate the point of you, if you want to attract people who, if you want to attract like larger enterprises who, you know, probably, probably reach more users than we do in this room, you don't want them to have to redo their network stack and you should, we should be building tools for them. And that port over to IPLD natively so at least their users data ports over to IPFS. Um, and yeah, just like me personally, like scoping out, looking at like deploying a Kubo node, scary. And I don't want to do it, and I'm not going to do it. Um, so uh, I'm probably planning on implementing an HTTP service instead, um, because that's what my clients need. Are there spicy takes? Are there non-salty takes? <laughs> Actually, no, no salty takes. Sweet takes? <laughs> yeah, a, li a little bit. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that for a lot of people also like HTTP and IPFS was always the gateway um, and I, I really hope us to move away from that because um, especially when HTTP becomes a transport or like more accessible transports are available and really push people to like actually verify the content that they get because if you view something in the gateway Actually, you haven't won much. Yeah, you requested something by a hash, which just made it more inconvenient for you, but like, the server is still in control. It can show you whatever you want. Um, yeah, it's basically Web2 with extra steps. So please verify your content, request blocks, put them together in some form, make sure the hashes match, otherwise content addressing kind of didn't work. It, it would also get a lot easier to get browsers to adopt uh, IPFS tooling, if it became just about verifying what you get on whatever transport you're using and just checking things match as it, right? That's what means treat cloud as a buffer. I think to, to that last point, uh, in conversations with browser vendors, we heard one specific browser vendor from one of the most well, a lot of us are running their operating system software. Uh, that the approach in Chromium to use a racing gateway as the client was fundamentally aligned with how they think about that browser code that they've owned for decades and have to maintain for decades into the future. And said something to the effect of, we're still not sure why you want to do it, but we don't find that objectionable. So from a paradigm standpoint when you think about the investment in very large security teams and huge amounts of infrastructure and the enterprise companies that all depend on it like that that approach is something that buys us a lot of goodwill as opposed to putting a turning the browser into a server I don't know if this fits into the uh, HTTP category but I definitely had an aha that uh, we actually should probably recognize that we have slightly different networks and slightly different use cases. I would like to protect uh, Papaya, um, which is Robin's name, uh, for the plain Jane uh, content addressed commons network that everybody can publish SIDS into, that everybody can access. But there are very strong use cases for permissioned, encrypted caches at slightly different layers that specialized clients can talk to, um, um, but that we commit to having a really performant base use case around Papaya. 
uh, and understand how to move in and out of that. Other comments? Let's go into, since we're drifting into content addressing, let's discuss that last point, which is, it was, IPFS is just content addressing, always has been, I think was the comment. Any thoughts on that? Oh, oh I can voice some thoughts. Uh, uh, yeah, I think like, we, since last, at the last thing, and in you know, the last couple of years, a lot of us has gravitated towards thinking that SIDs and being able to navigate SID graphs no matter what transport you're using, no matter what programs you're using, and so on, is really what IPFS is about. Um, and I think we've written um, posts and documentation and programs to that effect, but we haven't really sort of like canonicalized it. Um, yeah, any, any other thoughts from other folks? Is there broad agreement in this? Oh, yeah, uh, Alan? Yeah, uh, it, it, my point is broad agreement. <laughs> um, it, uh, citizen content addressing are IPFS's superpower, and it always has been, and probably always will be from my standpoint. It's really easy to explain to like the Web2 crowd and the, all, of those, all of those people who are doing Web2 stuff. It's an obvious, uh, obvious enhancement to what they do, and, uh, and we should embrace it as our superpower and try and make the most of it. Um, hi. <clears throat> I think it's been really eye-opening once we start detangling peer-to-peer -peer networking from content addressing and recognizing that they're both really beneficial, but we could bring benefits of one without the other and vice versa. Um, and, and, and uh, also to help close the loop, like um, HTTP it originally was described as a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And it sort of became less peer-to-peer -peer because of the ills of location addressing, not because of the underlying HTTP client-server model. In fact, HTTP was like really enabling and freeing everybody to run their own stuff. And that was like very freeing. Um, so it was like the peer-to-peer -peer of the time. It's just that location addressing bundled it all into these like massively scaled up cloud cloud things, um, and so it could be that like by just kind of really emphasizing the content addressing piece, um, that can uh, make HTTP peer to peer again, and um, and ask for the P2P folks like let's bring vanilla HTTP structures into into the library so we can just use lip P2P to talk to um, normal infrastructure. Any other thoughts on this one? What do we need to like really push this? Like, do we need like specs? We have some blog posts already. We have some talks already. What else do we need as a as a community to like land this point um, with the world? The content addressed something alliance. What was it? Kakao. Kakao. <laughs> what What was the C? <laughs> Okay, going to address the lines. There's no additional C? Oh, I see. Got it. Ka! Yeah. Is that what we need? Anything else? Any other comments from others about this topic? I'm sensing fatigue. So with that, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so is that a renaming of IPFS? The, the Content Address Alliance? No, no, no. Um, the Content Address <laughs> Alliance would be a group. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, file a, an IPIP for that. Uh, <laughs> You could, uh, but uh, now the point was to like create an organization, kind of like the Bytecode Alliance or the Decentralized Storage Alliance or whatever that um, bring together the discussion about it um, and just get produce the standards and align groups to what it means. Um, so it's like a organizational body sort of thing. Yep. 
Um, more of a question, but is is the peer-to-peer -peer dream dead? Is quick the end game? It's a good question. I don't think so for a lot of reasons. Um, uh, and, and quick itself is a transport that can be used in peer-to-peer. -peer, so um, I, I just really want to caution anybody at thinking that any transport is the end state. That has never been the case and will never be the case. We will always find problems with it. The issue is that some transports become so strong that they tend to ossify somewhere in the stack. IPv4 has ossified so much that the IETF's attempt at making IPv6 work have like only somewhat succeeded up to this point, right? IPv6 works, but we're not getting rid of IPv4. Like, there's just no way. Um, HTTP, same story. TCP, same story, right? Like, how many protocols couldn't compete with TCP because firewalls and middle boxes and um, the browser all uh, just use TCP and nothing else? So the same thing will, and, and we only got quick, really, because Google <coughs> controlled the, a large swath of the browsers and some of the biggest web services in the world and forced the conversion, right? Uh, before QUIC, we had SCTP and DCCP and a bunch of other protocols that tried to do the same thing QUIC did and couldn't succeed because they did not control enough of the bo both sides to lift out of, of just the TCP hegemony. So it could be that QUIC ha becomes like the next hegemon for a while, but no matter what, we're guaranteed to have other transports that it won't be those. And there's a good reason for it. Like once you hit certain latencies, Quick just won't work near that well, right? So if we're talking about interplanetary and space things, you go and try maintaining a quick stream between Earth and Mars, and you know you tell me that that's going to be the way that you're going to move content addressing uh, in the future, right? Like there's so many, even though it's zero RTT, there's so much, so many expectations about the latencies in the in that connection that that just won't work, at least in that setting. Um, there's other settings like. Um, when you, in, in local area connectivity, um, there's just other transports that people use. So just don't assume that there's one transport ever. Write your software and write your platform so that you can swap those. But you better work with the dominant thing, because uh, if you don't, then you're like just pushing up hills super hard uh, for, for too long. That would be my, my opinion. Other thoughts, opinions on this? Like, if somebody adopts Quick wholesale and doesn't provide the way to switch it, I predict the same thing with, like, SHA-1 in Git. Like, eventually, eventually it looked really foolish. It might just take 10 years to get there. Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of the are we peer-to-peer -peer versus are we centralized comes down to the fact that we've got a bunch of middle boxes that are causing trouble and has basically turned the internet into connection-centric things as opposed to packet routing things. But like, don't abandon hope because the internet started built on top of the telephone system, which was pretty darn connection centric. Yeah. And we managed to be like, hey, let's just build an overlay network after and route packets. And if it comes to that, we can build an overlay network and be like, new plan. We're gonna build a bunch of NAT traversing things and then we're gonna run IP over it because there's this protocol IP that does packet routing. You'll love it. Yes. Yeah. It Kudos, and uh, yes, so request for the lipid p stack to have packet transports. Uh, I think it's also worth remembering that peer-to-peer uh, -peer isn't just about pushing bytes across the wire as quickly as possible. There's been so many really good talks this past couple of days about things like agency and autonomy and just empowering users more, and that's the sort of stuff that peer-to-peer -peer technology is able to do in ways that things like Quick will never be able to. 